Tuesday, the A-Team must save homeless children from deadly gamblers. This one is going to be for the kids. And on Riptide, find out how the guys met Murray. It's enough to give you goosebumps. Then... I'm Roger Mudd. Does the Earth have a fever? Can you choose the sex of your child? And what happened to the man who dropped the first bomb? Tuesday on the premiere of American Almanac. Major League Baseball teeters on the verge of its second strike in four years tonight, and both sides see little hope of avoiding a walkout. News Center 6 tonight is next. Taco Bell's been struck by pizzazz. New pizzazz pizza. It's cheesy like a pizza, but it's really crisp and light. Every time I get struck, I hear loud. When I get struck, the roof blows off, the floor splits open. <laughs> Get struck by the never-before taste of pizzazz pizza. Can pizzazz strike twice? Get struck now by new pizzazz pizza for $1.99. Only at Taco Bell. We want all children to see as well as they possibly can. So Texas State Optical makes this special back-to-school offer. Children's glasses at half price. Have your child examined by the eye doctor affiliated with TSO, or bring in a prescription. Either way, you'll get TSO's finest quality eyewear, made exactly to the doctor's specifications, at half price. Texas State Optical, children's glasses at half price, for a limited time only. Hello, I'm Bob McRaney, General Manager of WDSU-TV. Since coming to New Orleans, I've been impressed by the affection and concern the people have for our community. Our goal at TV6 is to make those concerns heard so improvements can be made. Let us know how you feel we're doing by writing to TV6 Listens. If your letter is selected, our cameras will tape your comments to appear in our local news programs the first Friday of every month. Write to TV6 Listens in care of the station and let us know how we can be a better neighbor too. You make Sports and Dan Milham, the weatherman. This is New Center 6 tonight. Good evening, Charlie's on vacation. A Major League Baseball strike seems inevitable tonight. Both sides in the dispute over salary arbitration say they are resolved to a walkout, the second in four years. Neither the players nor the owners appear ready to compromise. New York Mets sensation Daryl Strawberry hit three home runs, drove in five, and scored four times against the Chicago Cubs in Wrigley Field today in what may have been one of the final games of the 1985 season. With negotiations between players and owners deadlocked over salary arbitration, Baseball Tonight teeters on the verge of its second strike in four years. No further meetings have been scheduled, and both sides say prospects of a settlement do not look good. Owners negotiator Lee McPhail. I can't say that I'm optimistic at this point. Some time ago. And from the Players Association, Don Fear. They're about to have the strike that obviously they want. The strike deadline is officially set for the start of Tuesday night's games, but representatives of the Players Association say a settlement will have to be reached sometime in the morning if players are to get to the ballparks on time. Some fans are resentful. You should still think about the fans that come out here, I think we pay their salary. While Commissioner Peter Uberoff continues to try to exert his influence on negotiations, many players are known to have booked flights home after tonight's games. Jennifer McLogan, NBC News, New York. The long-running squabble over extending the east-west run runway at New Orleans International Airport into St. Charles Parish could come to an end tomorrow. Tonight, the St. Charles Parish Council approved the runway extension and will meet tomorrow with Kenner officials to close the deal. Logan Banks reports. Extending New Orleans International Airport's east-west runway into St. Charles Parish swampland is an idea the Aviation Board and the cities of Kenner and New Orleans have pursued for a long time. Monday night, the idea moved closer to reality when St. Charles Parish Councilman unanimously authorized Parish President Kevin Prelog to enter into an intent agreement on the runway extension with the city of Kenner. You know as well as I do that we had a major accident over the New Orleans International Airport, a uh, great tragedy. I feel that it's time for this council and it, to move that we may be able to assist in the saving of lives and property by the extension of that airport. Under the terms of such an agreement, St. Charles Parish would give the land for the runway extension to Kenner in return for $100,000 of airport sales tax every year. 
Parish Councilman also want the authority to appoint the Aviation Board member from St. Charles Parish. The mayor of New Orleans now has that power. Tomorrow, the action shifts to Kenner, where Freelo and the Parish Councilman will meet with Mayor Aaron Broussard and his runway committee. Freelo says, barring any unforeseen obstacles, a final agreement on the runway extension could be reached as early as this fall. In Hanville, Logan Banks, New Center 6. Peace activists around the world are marking the 40th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima with rallies, speeches, and church bells. In Hiroshima, a lone tolling bell, then a minute of silence to mark the moment the atom bomb fell on the city 40 years ago. Lays made of origami paper cranes, a symbol of hope rising from the atomic ashes, hang over statues of A-bomb victims. The biggest memorial is being held in Peace Park, which was built near the center of the blast that ushered in the nuclear age. A 46-year-old woman was killed this evening near the Wrigley's when her station wagon drifted into the path of an oncoming pickup truck. Police say the car driven by a woman whose name is being withheld pending notification of relatives swerved into the path of a pickup driven by 20-year-old Robert Gunselin of 4843 Britannia on U.S. Highway 90 between Chef Pass and the Wrigley's. Gunselin and two passengers were treated and released at Methodist Hospital. Mayor Dutch Moriel and City Attorney Sal Anselmo are among those to be subpoenaed in District Attorney Harry Connick's widening investigation of city departments. The move comes as Connick and City Hall are squabbling over the legality of lawyers who are advising city workers appearing before the grand jury. Political reporter Clancy Dubos has the story. Sources at criminal court say the DA's office is now questioning streets department workers about allegations that private work was done on city time and with city equipment. Meanwhile, prosecutors are trying to have the defense attorneys disqualified from the case. Robert Glass and his partner, John Wilson Reed, are representing city workers before the grand jury. Connick says that could lead to a conflict of interest and is impeding his investigation. Do City Attorney in Sal Anselmo world, disagrees. World, We're not insisting that they take that advice. We're not directing him to the attorneys to take that advice. It's up, we, we let them know it's available for them at no cost to them. A hearing on Connick's motion has been set for Friday, and the witnesses are expected to include Sal Anselmo and Dutch Morial. So in spite of everyone's best efforts to the contrary, the political undertones of this investigation are finally coming to the surface. Clancy Dubose, New Center 6 at City Hall. What is this, Miami Vice? I love this. This is fun. This Saints Great Moment is brought to you by Sea King Restaurant, serving fresh New Orleans seafood. November 1971. The New Orleans Saints recorded their first ever win over Green Bay in a Week 11 meeting in Milwaukee. Safety Doug Wyatt returned a final period interception, 55 yards, capping a 29-21 victory. You're going to love Sea King's new barbecued shrimp. It's only $3.99. You heard me right. New Orleans-style barbecued shrimp in a fast food restaurant. It's at Sea King for only $3.99. It's about time. Now, this is real New Orleans seafood. Thanks, Sea King. Look what's good in the Sea King. It's good for the family. Now with barbecued shrimp. Soft contacts are glasses. It's best to have both. Contacts for the great look, glasses as an alternative. Both for $189 from the Vision Plaza. It's the complete package. Eye examination by our doctors of optometry, extended or daily wear soft contacts and glasses. Everything for $189. Appointments are not required, so visit your nearby Vision Plaza this week. Someone is always waiting for you at the Vision Plaza. For the second time in a month, President Reagan has had a brush with cancer. This time, it was a bump on his nose that turned out to be skin cancer. But Reagan says it's a minor problem with no further treatment necessary. The president disclosed that a pimple removed from his nose last week turned out to be more than just a skin irritation. I was informed that it had been examined 
and it was indeed a basal cell carcinoma, which is the most common and the least dangerous kind. Uh, they come from exposure to the sun. They do not betoken in any way that you are cancer prone. He said no further treatment of the skin cancer is necessary. On foreign policy, he defended his refusal to join the Soviets in a moratorium on nuclear testing. On domestic matters, the president gave an optimistic assessment of the economy, endorsed the budget compromise adopted by Congress, and announced he'll open a tax reform offensive this fall. David Rush, NBC News at the White House. 2,200 police are involved in a nationwide marijuana search and destroy mission. Led by U.S. Attorney General Ed Meese, who watched the drug destruction in Arkansas, law enforcement officers by late today had destroyed some 60,000 cultivated pot plants in 12 states with at least 15 people arrested. In northern Indiana alone, police found more than 7 million marijuana plants. Police are still at a loss for clues in the armed holdup of a Gentilly Baptist church where worshipers were held at gunpoint during Sunday night services. Diane Mack reports. Several worshipers stood outside Bethany Baptist Church trying to figure out what happened and why. They were robbed, police say, by two men who entered the church wearing stocking masks and carrying guns. Most of the worshipers are Spanish-speaking. According to a neighbor, one woman managed to climb a fence and call for help. Well, I was sitting down in here reading by my lamp, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm banging on, on here, and I, I kind of waved her to come around to the side, and she did, and I opened the door, and I spoke to her, and uh, she was very, very terrified, and she could hardly speak, as she was almost tongue-tied in a way to me, and a big, big gun. But Mark says at first he was hesitant, not knowing what was going on. I got to be careful first. I didn't know whether she was a, a bait for me to open the door or what. But I, 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 I reacted quickly. I got up anyhow, and, and I opened the door. And the fright that she had on her face, I knew that she was not a fake, not faking. Police say one man held the pastor at gunpoint while his partner told worshippers to throw their purses and wallets into the center aisle. The pastor says when the gunman kneeled to pick up the belongings, his gun went off accidentally. No one was injured, and the gunman made their getaway. Police are looking for two white men between 5'5 and 5'10 and are believed to be in their early 20s. Diane Mack, New Center 6. St. Bernard Parish officials want to turn the parish's faltering economy around. Faced with high unemployment and an eroding tax base, parish officials today began working to bolster the economy. Mark Phillips reports. Once the parish's industrial giant, Kaiser Aluminum now symbolizes St. Bernard's economic futility. Unemployment in St. Bernard is about 15 percent, one of the highest figures in the state. The parish's industrial base has eroded steadily the last few years. Kaiser led the way, laying off 2,700 workers. Other industries like oil refining, sugar, and shipbuilding have also made cutbacks. Since 1982, St. Bernard Parish has lost 4,000 jobs. The job market is limited. Business and political leaders have seen enough, and on Monday, they announced the formation of the St. Bernard Commerce Commission. Its aim is to sell the parish and lure new business. We're going to generate ourselves more to professional type businesses, uh, small businesses that may create 50 jobs, 20 jobs, just something to start off the economy down here and get the parish rolling again. We're going to sell, first of all, the quality of life. We're going to sell uh, uh, the education. We're going to sell, uh, uh, as, as, just like everybody else sells, uh, they make it attractive in, in, in tax incentives and so forth. The commission's job won't be easy. It will start out with a skeleton budget. But the commission hopes it can convince state lawmakers to help subsidize their efforts beginning next year. Mark Phillips, New Center 6. Dan is next with what looks like a week of those scattered thunderstorms. Then Vince with the latest on the threatened Major League Baseball strike. It's all covered in the memo. Last year, we saved big automakers almost $2 million in long-distance bills. We saved a manufacturer $600,000, a computer company $500,000. All told, over 350,000 companies, large and small, are saving millions of dollars by using MCI. Call MCI. If your company can get MCI savings without giving up anything, why would you possibly stay with AT&T? When Burger King tells some people the beefier new Whopper has a Kaiser cut roll, all they remember is more beef?
When we say the new Whopper is flame broiled with onions, tomatoes, lettuce, and more, all they think of is more beef. Even when we tell them the new Whopper just beat Big Mac and Wendy's single for best taste, they still say more beef. So how do you tell someone like this there's more to the new Whopper than more beef? Very carefully. New Orleans means different things to different people. Some see more, and some less, and some just see from a different perspective. But no matter how you look at it, New Orleans is something special, and visitors leave here feeling special, too. The Whitney, a great bank for a great city. Sounds like tomorrow's going to be a pretty wet one. Well, no, it's not going to be uh, uh, That's what I said. No, any particularly not. wetter than today. <laughs> we are. We do have an increasing chance of rain coming up in the forecast from a 40 to a 50 percent chance mm -hmm. of rain for Wednesday. I kind of suspected that tomorrow would get the 50 from the weather service, but nah, looks like tomorrow will be kind of like today and maybe a few more showers on Wednesday. Let's take a look at our high and low temperatures and you'll see that today we still, we hovered around 90 at some spots and we didn't get necessarily into the 90s. Technically, we were at 90 at the airport, 89 at Audubon, 91 at the Nature Center, and 89 at Slidell. Now, some of these days, we've been well into the 90s at all stations, 89 at Boothville. Rainfall totals weren't much in the metro area. Terrytown called in tonight. Bob had three hundredths of an inch. But look at Gulfport, 89 hundredths, nearly an inch of rain over there, and a quarter of an inch reported by KHOM down here at Homa, even though they had enough sunshine to get up to 94 degrees today. Now, some showers continued around us tonight, but not much in the metro area. Some in south-central Louisiana, from Baton Rouge down toward the coast, over the coastal waters, back up into Mississippi. But look at these clouds in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Quite a few thunderstorms continue there, enough that there's a flash flood watch posted for portions of Arkansas tonight. Elsewhere, you see some clouds, and there are showers up in the Plain States and through the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic and uh, eastern states. A few off the uh, Tampa side, the Gulf side of Florida. But they have, of course, diminished what with the cooling of the air this evening. Now, what we're looking at now are some partly cloudy skies, fewer clouds than earlier. Temperatures down to the 70s everywhere, 79 at the airport, Audubon, and here at the quarter, 77 at Slidell. You have a light easterly wind. It's considered kind of light, maybe variable, mostly southerly tonight. Humidity at 79, and it'll get into the 80s, of course, by morning when we cool down a couple more degrees. Tomorrow's map shows another one of those weak fronts turning into just an area of low pressure as it moves through the upper Mississippi Valley. The area most likely to have rain is around the Great Lakes tomorrow, but still, with the hot air and the moisture in our air, and our air is really quite moist, there'll be plenty of popcorn scattered thunderstorms popping up here and there. Elsewhere in the northern plains, some showers, and mostly sunny again for the western half of the country and quite warm. 90s here, while high temperatures in the Ohio Valley, in fact, down even into South Carolina and northern Georgia, highs only got to 70 today, so they're actually having some cooler than normal temperatures. Winds over the coastal waters south and southeast up to 10 knots with two to three foot seas. Not much in the way of bad weather unless, of course, you run into one of those scattered thunderstorms. Protected waters may be a bit choppy tomorrow. Uh, you're having low tides right now, and then the water will be rising to some early morning high tides, but hardly any rain. You're getting into that area where the tides just sort of go back and forth during the day. So you have a low tide, uh, high tides in the morning, and then low tides again by midday. So it's and just two tenths of a foot rain. So not much uh, in the way of tides to work with as fishermen. And the fish and game forecaster says that in the early morning hours, around breakfast time, the feeding may be active just after those early morning highs, but then not too much to uh, talk about the rest of the day. Overnight tonight, you got a 20% chance of rain. Not much, really. Our, we'll cool down another couple degrees, maybe to 75 or 73, and that just means it's going to be real nice and humid by the morning hours. Still just a 20% chance of rain, but with a temperature of about 80, humidity probably about 80, another real muggy, kind of a hazy morning, then your 40% chance.